It is a cozy, snowy day here on the homestead, so I'm gonna be making one of our favorite old-fashioned Christmas treats, gingerbread cake. Now, I love this recipe because it uses simple pantry ingredients that you are sure to have hanging around, plus I will show you how to do it with a sourdough twist. Okay, before we start the recipe, let's talk about the sourdough part of this real quick. Because I feel like some of you may be going, why the heck are you using sourdough to make a cake? So surprisingly, sourdough is actually a really awesome addition to cakes with stronger flavors, like a chocolate cake or a spice cake. You probably won't even taste that much of a sour flavor. It's just gonna add a little more depth and tang to the finished product. And the best part about using sourdough in this recipe is you can use sourdough discard, AKA sourdough that's not super active or bubbly. So if you've been feeding your starter and you need to get rid of some so it doesn't overflow your jar, this recipe is the perfect candidate to do that. And for those of you who might not have a sourdough starter going quite yet, I will include a non-sourdough gingerbread cake recipe down in the show notes. It actually comes from my Prairie Homestead cookbook. Okay, here's how this is going to go. First up, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then grab a nine inch pan and grease it with butter or coconut oil or whatever. Next up, we are going to cream the sugar and the melted butter. And I'm gonna be using Sucanat, which is a unrefined cane sugar in my recipe. But if you just have regular old brown sugar, that's totally okay. Once we've beaten this smooth with a stand mixer or a hand mixer or just a plain old fork if you have good arm muscles, Go ahead and add in your molasses. Uh, pro tip, take your molasses out of the fridge before you do this. What's that little phrase? Slower than molasses? Oh, refrigeration, not necessary. It says right there. So probably no one else puts their molasses in the fridge except me. And I will stop doing that now that I know better. Uh, so hopefully your molasses is pouring faster than mine is right now. Your eggs, the sourdough starter, and the baking soda. Now normally we add baking soda in with dry ingredients, but with this recipe, we're adding it in with the wet ones in order to help the cake not sink in the middle. Well, hopefully at least we'll see how this goes, but that's the plan. Now go ahead and grab a separate bowl and mix together the flour, ginger, cinnamon, and sea salt. Once those are all incorporated, you can mix them into your wet ingredients. Try not to over mix here. And then go ahead and add in your hot water. And the water can be about 100 degrees. It doesn't have to be completely boiling. Spoon that into your greased pan and stick it in the oven for 40 or 45 minutes or so, or until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out clean. So I have a little bit of time while my gingerbread cake is baking. So first things first, I'm gonna feed my sourdough starter, get that replenished with flour and water. And then I'm gonna head outside and trim some tree branches to add a little more Christmas spirit into my homestead decor. it out of the oven it looks amazing I like our toothpick test and now it's time for the secret sauce literally now you can top your gingerbread cake with powdered sugar or a lot of people do some whipped cream there's nothing wrong with that but I prefer caramel sauce because well you'll see go ahead and grab a small saucepan and whisk together a half cup of brown sugar and a little bit of organic and starch. Once that's mixed together, whisk in a quarter cup water, mix that together till it's smooth, 
Then add some heavy cream and a tablespoon of butter. Continue to cook and stir over that medium heat until the sauce gets amazing and thick and bubbly. Then pop it off the burner, pour in a little vanilla extract, and you can drizzle that right over your gingerbread cake. Or if you need to, you can stick it into an airtight container and store it in your fridge for up to three days or so. Like Christmas. Mm -hmm. okay. If you'd like my best tips and tricks for starting a sourdough starter of your own and capturing yeast out of the air, check out this video.